take a look at what he's actually done. He's done very little. His trade deals are the same way. He talks about these great trade deals. You know, he talks about the art of the deal. China's made, perfected the art of the steel. We have a higher deficit with China now than we did before. We have the highest deficit, trade deficit China with ate Mexico. Your lunch, All right, eight eight percent. Percent. And, and, China yeah. ate your lunch, uh, Joe. And but, no wonder okay. your son goes in and he takes out, he takes out oh. billions of dollars takes out billions of dollars to manage. He makes millions of dollars. And also, Simply while we're at true. it, why Simply is it, just out of curiosity, the mayor of Moscow's wife gave your son three and a half million dollars. What did he true. do to deserve it? That what did he do with Barista to deserve that, wait, wait, $183,000? None you've of that is question, true. Not an answer. If not, none of that is true. Oh, really? He totally didn't give three million? Mr. President, he did. Totally, Mr. President, please. Totally discredited it. Totally discredited. And by the way, well, wait, he didn't get three and a half million dollars, Joe. Mr. Vice, he got three and a half million dollars. It is not true. Oh, really, Mr. Oh. President? But, Mr. You, it's an it's an open discussion, please. Now, you, you, it's a fact. I, well, there's, you have raised an issue. Let the Vice totally President answer. Discredited. Did Barista was a pay him one hundred eighty-three thousand a, a month what, what, with what, no what, experience what, in energy? Mi Mr. Look, President, no my son did nothing wrong at Barista. I think he did, Mr. President. Let him answer. He doesn't want to let me answer because he knows I have the truth. His, his position has been totally, thoroughly discredited. By who? And the media. By everybody. Well, by the, by media, the media, by our allies, by the World Bank, by, e by everyone has discredited. As a matter of Dude, fact, I, matter of fact, Mr. even President, the people who testified under oath. So let under me oath, ask you this. Henry, no, no, oath, go ahead, Mr. Henry, I'm listening to you. The people under, you got three and a half he, million he dollars from Moscow. Te he testified under oath in his administration, said, I did my job and I did it very well. Oh, really? I did it I'd honorably. Like to know who they are. Every, well, I'll give you the list I'll of the people them. who testified. No, no, go ahead, sir. Sure, you, they, you've already fired most of them because they did some a good job. Some people don't well, do a good here's job. The, with you, Go ahead. You get the the wait a minute. You get the final word, Mr. Well, it's hard to get any word in with this clown. Excuse me. This, hey, hey this let me person. just say to you. No, no, no. I'm no. Mr. President. Three and, I'm and a half Mr. million, President. Joe. That is simply. Why did not he deserve true. three and a half million it from did, Moscow? Look, here's the deal. We want to talk about families and ethics. I don't want to do that. I mean, his family, we could talk about all night. His family's my already... Family, no, 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 let him go. My what, family already lost wrote. a fortune by coming down and helping us with government. Ahead, and that's such a... That's such a great... single one of them lost This is not Mr. about President. my family or his family. It's about your family. They the American like people. He doesn't... Nothing. That's not true. It doesn't want to talk about what you need, you, the American people. It's about you. That's what we're talking about here. All right, that's the, end of the, here. Uh, that's the end of the shouldn't segment. We're, mo the we're moving on. There's, he didn't take them. Well, Vice President, very, Chris, no. I, can I be honest? It's a very important try question. Try to be honest. No, I, I, I stood, stood up. up. No, I, I, the answer to the question is no. Ukraine. No, I, sir. With a billion sir, dollars, if you that don't get rid is of absolutely you know what? You're, wait, not stop. true. You're doing it. You're going to have true. Gentlemen. I hate to raise Chris, my voice, but it seems to be, why should I be different than the two of you? So here's the deal. Good point. Vice President Biden, you say that President Trump's response to the violence in Charlottesville three years ago when he talked about very fine people on both sides was what directly led you to launch this run for president. Oh, yes. But you also had people that were very fine people on both sides. You had people in that group. Excuse me. Excuse me. I saw the same pictures as you did. You had people in that group that were there to protest the taking down of, to them, a very, very important statue and the renaming of a park from Robert E. Lee to another name. George Washington was a slave owner. Was George Washington a slave owner? So will George Washington now lose his status? Are we going to take down, excuse me, are we going to take down, are we going to take down statues to George Washington? How about Thomas Jefferson? What do you think of Thomas Jefferson? You like him? Okay, good. Are we going to take down the statue? Because he was a major slave owner. Now we're we going to take down his statue. So you know what? It's fine. You're changing history. You're changing culture. And you had people, and I'm not talking about the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. But you had many people in that group other than neo-Nazis and white nationalists, okay? 
and the press has treated them absolutely unfairly. Now, in the other group also, you had some fine people, but you also had troublemakers, and you see them come with the, with the black outfits and with the helmets and with the baseball bats. You got a, you had a lot of bad you had a lot of bad people in the other group too. Well, the press has treated unfairly, sir. I'm sorry. I just didn't understand what you were saying. You were saying the press has treated white nationalists unfairly. No, I just didn't understand what you were saying. No. There were people in that rally, and I looked the night before. If you look, they were people protesting very quietly the taking down of the statue of Robert E. Lee. I'm sure in that group there were some bad ones. The following day, it looked like they had some rough, bad people neo-Nazis, uh, white nationalists, whatever you want to call them. But you had a lot of people in that group that were there to innocently protest and very legally protest because, you know, I don't know if you know, they had a permit. The other group didn't have a permit. So I only tell you this. There are two sides to a story. I thought what took place was a horrible moment for our country, a horrible moment. It is true. The reason I got in the race is when those people, close your eyes, remember what those people look like coming out of the fields, carrying torches, their veins bulging, spewing, just spewing anti-Semitic bile and accompanied by the Ku Klux Klan. A young woman got killed. And they asked the president what he thought. He said there were very fine people on both sides. No president has ever finish said anything statement. like it that. Finish it, it is his now, who second, minutes, sir. Second point I'd make to you is that when Floyd was killed, when Mr. Floyd was killed, there was a peaceful protest in front of the White House. It was set alight in what was really terrifying scenes. This all happened in the minutes leading up to the 11 p.m. curfew. This is the first time that Washington, D.C. has had a curfew in place. And, and while it was obviously terrifying at the time, the good news is that that curfew has succeeded in really dissipating this crowd. What did he do? He came out of his bunker, had the military to use tear gas on them so we could walk across to a church and hold up a Bible. And then what happened after that? The bishop of that very church said that it was the disgrace. The general who was with him said he all he, all he ever wants to do is divide people, not unite people at all. This is a president who has used everything as a dog whistle to try to generate racist hatred, racist division. This man, this man is the, is the savior of African Americans. This man, cares at all? This man's done virtually nothing. Look, the fact is that you have to look at what he talks about. You have to look at what he did. And what he did has been disastrous for the African-American community. So, Pre President Trump, you have two minutes. Why should Americans right. trust you over your opponent to deal with racism? He did a crime bill, 1994, where you call them super predators, African Americans, the super predators, and they've never forgotten it. They've never forgotten it, Joe. No, no, sir, it's his two minutes. Unless we do something about that cadre of young people, tens of thousands of them, born out of wedlock, without parents, without supervision, without any structure, without any conscience developing, if we don't, they will or a portion of them will become the predators 15 years from now. And Madam President, we have predators on our streets. They are not just gangs of kids anymore. They are often the kinds of kids that are called super predators. No conscience, no empathy. We can talk about why they ended up that way, but first we have to bring them to heel. And the President has asked the FBI to launch a very concerted effort against gangs everywhere. Uh, Bill Clinton was in Philadelphia on Thursday, and he was at a rally, and he was disrupted by some Black Lives Matter protesters uh, who were objecting to Hillary Clinton's use of the term super predators back in the 90s. Yep. And he offered a very full-throated defense of not just the 1994 crime bill, uh, but also the term at the time. What do you make of, of that specific debate? The secretary has said that she would not use that term again. I, I think it had race connotations at, at that period. And I think Secretary Clinton said uh, that that's not a phrase that she would use again. Who do you like for president, sir? Uh, Hillary Clinton. Do you think whites are superior to African Americans and Latinos? 
Well, we are God's chosen people. So you did that, and they called you a super predator, and I'm letting people out of jail now that you have treated the African-American population community, you have treated the black community about as bad as anybody in this country. You did the 1990, and that's why, if you look at the polls, I'm doing better than any Republican has done in a long time, because they saw what you did. You call them super predators, and you've called them worse than that, because you look back at your testimony over the years, you've called them a lot worse than that. We must take back the streets. It doesn't matter whether or not the person that is accosting your son or daughter or my son or daughter, my wife, your husband, my mother, your parents. It doesn't matter whether or not they're the victims of society. The end result is they're about to knock my mother on the head with a lead pipe, shoot my sister, beat up my wife, take on my sons. So I don't want to ask what made them do this. They must be taken off the street. We must take back to the streets. It doesn't matter whether or not the person that is accosting your son or daughter or my son or daughter, my wife, your husband, my mother, your parents, it doesn't matter whether or not they're the victims of society. The end result is they're about to knock my mother on the head with a lead pipe, shoot my sister, beat up my wife, take on my sons. So I don't want to ask. What made them do this? They must be taken off the street. Unless we do something about that cadre of young people, tens of thousands of them, born out of wedlock, without parents, without supervision, without any structure, without any conscience developing, if we don't, they will, or a portion of them will, become the predators 15 years from now. And Madam President, we have predators on our streets. We believe in law and order, but you don't. The top 10 cities and just about the top 40 cities are run by Democrats and in many cases, radical left. And they've got you wrapped around their finger, Joe, to a point where you don't want to say anything about law and order. And I'll tell you what, the people of this country want and demand law and order, and you're afraid to even say it. All right. I want, to, I want to return to the question of race. It's the only way we're going to bring this country together is bring everybody together. There's nothing we cannot do if we do it together. We can take this on and we can defeat racism Vice in America. President, I mean, President Trump, sir. During the Obama-Biden administration, there was tremendous division. There was hatred. You look at uh, Ferguson, you look at you go to very many places. Look at Oakland. Look what happened in Oakland. Look what happened in Baltimore. Look what happened. To, frankly, it was more violent than what I'm even seeing now. Oh, my but Lord. the reason this is, is that ridiculous. the Democrats Absolutely that run these cities ridiculous. don't want to talk like you about law and order. Violent and you crime. still haven't mentioned. Violent Are crime. you in favor of law and order? I'm in favor of law. You follow Are you in favor of law and order? Go yes, ahead. Yes, I'm You ask a question, let him finish. Law and order. Law and order. Let him answer. Law and order with justice where people get treated fairly. In the joint recommendation that came from the Biden-Bernie Sanders task force, you talked about, quote, reimagining policing. Yeah. First of all, what does reimagining policing mean? And do you support it means uh, uh, let me if I might finish the question, what does reimagining policing mean? And do you support the Black Lives Matter uh, call for uh, for community control of policing? Look, what I support is the police having the opportunity to deal with the problems they face. And I'm, not, I'm totally opposed to defunding the police officers. As a matter of fact, police, local police, the only one defunding in his budget calls for a $400 million cut in local law enforcement assistance. They need more assistance. They need when they show up for a 9-11 call to have someone with them as a psychologist or psychiatrist to keep them from having to use force and be able to talk people down. We have to have community policing like we had before where the officers get to know the people in the communities. That's when crime went down. It didn't go up. It went down. And so we have to be engaged. That's not what in they're talking about, that's, Chris. That's well, not what that, they're talking about. He's talking exactly, about defunding the that, police. That is not true. He doesn't have any well, law well, you, support. Look, he has no law enforcement That's support. not true. Almost that's nothing. Not, that, look. Oh, really? Who do you have? Name one group that supports you. Name one group that came out and supported you. Go look, ahead. 
Look, think we have time. We don't have time to do no, anything. No, no, think so, about it. All right, Name folks, one law enforcement folks. group that came well, out think, and I supported. Think, gentlemen, I think I'm going to I'm going to take back the there moderator's are, role, and I, want, and I want to get to another subject, which is the issue of protests in many cities that have turned violent. In Portland, Oregon, especially, we had a, more than a hundred straight days of protests, which I think you would agree. You talk about peaceful protests. Many of those turned We're into riots. Mr. Vice President, you say that people who commit crimes should be held accountable. You had never called for the leaders in Portland and in Oregon to call us, bring in the National Guard and knock well, off a hundred days of riots. They can, in fact, take care of it if he just stay out of the way. Oh, Look, here, oh really? Here, oh, really? Here's but the that, thing. Uh, that, I sent sorry, in the no, wait, U.S. I asked him a question. to get the killer no, of the that, young man in the middle of the street. They shot him. Uh, and for three Ms. days, President Trump, Portland President wouldn't President Trump, do anything. I had to send in the U.S. Marshals. They Trump, took care of business. Go ahead, and, sir. And by the way, you know, his own former spokesperson said, you know, riots and chaos and violence help his cause. That's what this is all about. I don't know who said that. I do. Who? I think who? It, Kellyanne Conway. I don't think she said that. She said that. We're far, so far beyond peaceful protest. Right. And uh, this is why the president and the vice president last night are making a strong case for public safety. And this could come to your own neighborhood, obviously. The more chaos and anarchy and vandalism and violence reigns, the better it is for the very clear choice on who's best on public safety and law and order. And so here's the All right. But here's the point. Go the ahead, point sir. is that that's what he is keeps trying to rile everything up. He doesn't want to calm things down. You have repeatedly we, criticized the, the vice president for not specifically calling out Antifa and other left wing extremist right. groups. But are you willing tonight to condemn white supremacists and militia groups sure. and to say that they need to stand down and not add to the violence in a number of these cities, as we saw in Kenosha. And as we've seen in Portland. Sure, Are you I'm prepared to, to specifically do, that, do it? Well, I, go would ahead, say, I would say almost everything I see is from the left wing, not from the right so wing. So what, what, you you what are you saying? I'm, I'm willing to do anything. I want to see well, peace. Then do it, sir. Say I'm, it. Do it. Say it. There are only really a handful of elected Republican leaders in Washington who have uttered those words, Black Lives Matter. And I wonder, sir, if those are words that you will utter right here, right here today. Black Lives Matter. Can you say those words? Forgive me for pressing you on this, sir, but I will note you did not say those words, Black Lives Matter. And there is an important distinction. People are saying, of course, all lives matter. But to say the words is an acknowledgement that black lives also matter in a time in this country when it appears that there's a segment of our society that doesn't agree. So why will you not say those words? Do it, sir. Say I'm, it. Do it. Say it. One final time. You, you won't say the words, and we understand your explanation. Do you want to call them? What do you want to call them? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacists and, like and right supremacists. Who would you like me to condemn? White supremacists and right supremacists. Stand back and stand by the neo-Nazis and the white nationalists, because they should be condemned totally. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Somebody's got to do something about Antifa and the left, because this is not a right-wing problem. His this own is a left wing. director This said is a left-wing no, problem. Ahead, white supremacists. Antifa's an idea, not an organization. Oh, you got it. Not kidding. malicious. That's what oh, his really? it's an idea. FBI, his okay. FBI director Gentlemen, said. Well, we're then gonna, you know what? No, no, no we're, done, we're done, sir. Everybody, we're moving on to the next. We're moving on to the your administration. That's not an idea. Everybody Antifa in your administration tells you the truth is a bad, is a bad idea. Can I tell you what? You have no Antifa, ideas that are Antifa is a dangerous, radical All right, radical gentlemen, group. we're now moving on to the Trump and, and Biden records. Them. They'll overthrow you. When a president, seconds. I'm going to ask a question. And speaking of my son, the way you talk about the military, the way you talk about them being losers and being and, 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 and just being suckers. My son was in Iraq. He spent a year there. He got the, he got the Bronze Star. He got the Conspicuous Service Medal. He was not a loser. He was a patriot, and the people left behind oh, there really? were heroes. Really? And I resent Are you talking about like Hunter? Hell. Are you talking about I'm Hunter? I'm talking about my son, Bo Biden. You're talking about I don't about know. I don't know, Bo. I know Hunter. Yeah, Hunter, you know got thrown, Hunter got thrown out of the military. He was thrown out, dishonorably discharged. That's not true. It wasn't dishonorably. cocaine use. And he didn't have a job until you became vice president. Once you None became of vice president, true. he made a fortune in Ukraine, in China, in Moscow, that is simply and various not other places. That is true. 
He my made son, a fortune. Gentlemen, my son. And he didn't have a job. My son, like a lot of people, like a lot of people we know at home, had a drug problem. He's overtaken it. He's, he's, he's fixed it. He's worked on it. And I'm proud of him. But why was he given tens of millions of dollars? All right. But he wasn't given tens of millions of dollars. That is totally, that's been totally discredited. We've already been totally discredited. We've, both, we've already been through this. I think the American people would rather hear about more substantial so subjects. Well, you know, yes. as the moderator, sir, I'm going to make a, know, a judgment call here. I know, but when somebody gets three and a half million okay, dollars right. from the let's mayor talk about, of Moscow, let's talk is, about I think true. it's a terrible That report is totally Why discredited. I, I, I Mitt think, Romney on that committee said it wasn't worth taxpayers' Gen money, that report. It was written for political you, reasons. You know, I'd like to talk about climate change. So would I. Final segment. Election integrity. He's just afraid of counting the votes because you're he knows wrong. The outcome. You're wrong. You're no, wrong. I, I, I want to continue with you on I this. I love yeah. Vice yeah. President Biden. Because Chris, he's so wrong in, when he makes a statement no, like that. Excuse me. Vice President Biden, the biggest problem, in fact, over the years with mail in voting has not been fraud historically. It has been that sizable numbers, sometimes hundreds of thousands of ballots are thrown out because they have not been properly filled out or there is some other irregularity or they missed the deadline. So the question I have is, are you concerned that the Supreme Court with a Justice Barrett will settle any dispute? I'm concerned that any court would settle this because here's the deal. When you, when you file, when you get a ballot and you fill it out, you're supposed to have an affidavit. If you didn't know, you have someone say that this is me. You should be able to, if in fact you can verify that's you when the, before the ballot is thrown out, that's sufficient to be able to count the ballot because someone made a mistake and not dotting the correct I. Who they voted for, testify, say who they voted for, say it's you, that is totally legitimate. All right. Excuse final, me, no, no, no. when you I have, have a 80 final, million I, ballots, gentlemen, I have a final Senate question. Senate is swamping I, the system. I, you, 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 you know you, it can't be done. You know it can't. And already all right. there's been so fraud. So now, the mail service delivers Wait a minute, gentlemen, in the final question is, in eight ballots. states, will you urge your supporters to stay calm during this extended period, not to engage in any civil unrest? And will you pledge tonight that you will not declare victory until the election has been independently certified. President Trump, you I'm go first. I'm urging my supporters to go into the polls and watch very carefully because that's what has to happen. I am urging them to do it. I hope it's going to be a fair election. If it's a fair You're election, what? I am 100% on board. But if I see tens of thousands of ballots being manipulated, I can't go along with that. And I'll tell and what, you what, what does that from mean, a common does that mean You're tell you what it means. people to take to it the street? It means you have a fraudulent election. You're and sending you out 80 do, million ballots. They're not, they're not equipped. To, these people aren't equipped to handle it, number one. Number two, okay. they cheat. They cheat. Vice President Biden, final question for you. Will you urge your supporters to stay calm while the vote is counted? And will you pledge not to declare victory until the election is independently certified? Yes. He has no idea what he's talking about. Here's the deal. The fact is, I will accept it. And he will, too. You know why? Because... Once the winner is declared after all the, all the ballots are counted, all the votes are counted, that'll be the end of it. That'll be the end of it. And if it's me, in fact, fine. If it's, if it's not me, I'll support the outcome. And I'll be a president not just for the Democrats. I'll be a president for Democrats and Republicans. And this guy... I want to see fact, an honest okay. ballot count. Gentlemen, we, you say that's the end Chris, of it? This is the I end of this debate? honest ballot count. We're going to leave it there. Too. Uh, to be continued as in more debates as we go on. Uh, President Trump, Vice President Biden, it's been an interesting hour and a half. I want to thank you both and good night. Thank you. Thank you.
And with that, I will take questions. Uh, Kelly, if I could start off, um, I'd like to ask you for a definitive and declarative statement without ambiguity or deflection. As the person who speaks for the president, does the president denounce white supremacism and groups that espouse it in all their forms? Say it. Do it. Say it. This has been answered yesterday by the president himself, the day before by the president himself on the debate stage. The president was asked this. He said, sure, three times. Yesterday, he was point blank, blank asked, do you uh, denounce white supremacy? And he said, I've always denounced any form of that. I can go back and read for you um, in August 2019. In one voice, our nation must condemn racism, bigotry, and white supremacy. In August of 2017, racism is evil, and those who cause violence in its name are criminals criminals and thugs, including the KKK, neo-Nazis, white supremacists, and other hate groups. I have an entire list of these quotes that I can go through with you. But he has condemned but, white supremacy more than any president but, but, in modern history. Just to clear it up this morning, can you, naming it, make a declarative statement that you denounce, that the president denounces it? Say it. Do it. Say it. The president has denounced this repeatedly. The, the you, president was asked this. You're you just, making, you're contriving a no, storyline and a narrative. I'm asking you to put he this said, to rest. I just did. I read you all of the quotes. And if you need quotes. to see them in can writing, I will put them in an email. Hold on. So, Kaylee, can, can, you, can you right now denounce white supremacy and the group that is found? I just did. The president has denounced white supremacy. The Say it. Do it. Say it. Say it. Do it. Say it. KKK and hate groups in all forms. He signed a resolution to that effect. Uh, the president just last week, perhaps you all weren't covering it, but just last week expressed his desire to see the KKK prosecuted as domestic terrorists. This president uh, had advocated for the death penalty for a white supremacist, the first federal execution in 17 years. His record on this is unmistakable, and it's shameful that the media refuses to cover it. A lot of news coming out of that press briefing. Yeah, and she pushed back against all the questions against far-right groups. She said, why aren't they asking about far-left groups like Antifa and the violence caused by them? Let's bring in our chief White House correspondent, John Roberts. He's live in the briefing room. And, John, what's the big takeaway from today's briefing? Well, you know, uh, Trace and Sandra, it's, it's true that questions need to be asked about Antifa as well. And President Trump illuminated that during the debate, talked about it yesterday as well. But, uh, you know, I asked a simple question of Kayleigh McEnany today, and that is, can, can you say here definitively, without ambiguity, without deflection, uh, because many times, you know, we'll, we'll see any politician or a press secretary deflect to something else as opposed to answering the question directly, if the president denounces white supremacy and groups that espouse it in all of their forms. And she proceeded to read a number of quotes from the past. But what I was asking for was, given the confusion over what's happened in the past couple of days, if she would definitively say the president denounces white supremacy, white supremacist groups, and anybody who would like to do violence in the name of white supremacy. Say it. Do it. Say it. Say it. Do it. Say it. Say it. Do it. Say it. And she wouldn't do that, which I thought was a little unusual. So for some reason, the White House wants to rely on previous record, which I think in all fairness, most people would say there is some ambiguity there. The record is mixed. Why not just come right out today and say, here's the definitive answer to that question. And, and, and in the height of this election, mm -hmm. when it would probably do the president a lot of good to have somebody say the president denounces white supremacy and groups that espouse it, they wouldn't do that here in the briefing room. And I, and I was somewhat puzzled by that. And I'm wondering, John, quickly, because she says she pushed back saying the president did exactly that yesterday, post-debate, saying that he did denounce white supremacy. Was there ambiguity in that statement as well in your assessment? You, you know, politics is such a nuanced game. And, and I can tell you this, because it, it, was, it was my wife, Kira Phillips of ABC, who asked him that question yesterday. And, and she said to him, do you denounce white supremacy? And he, he, he got a little bit worked up at her about it and, and said, I denounce it. I've always denounced that. But I don't understand why he wouldn't say, I denounce white supremacy. I've always denounced white supremacy. For some reason, they're not saying the word. And that's what's very puzzling. John Roberts live for us at the White House. John, thank you. Uh, I was uh, simply looking, Melissa, for a declarative statement today just to clear the air, and that was not forthcoming from the White House. Now, this, this all started on Tuesday night 
at the uh, debate in Cleveland when Chris Wallace put a question to the candidates uh, and to President Trump about racial unrest, asking if the president uh, would denounce uh, white supremacy. And the president said, well, name, name a group, name a group. And Joe Biden came out and said, Proud Boys. And so the president said, uh, okay, to the Proud Boys, stand back and stand by. Uh, yesterday, when the president was asked about Proud Boys and what he said about them, uh, he uh, he said that he didn't know who the Proud Boys were, uh, something that Kaylee Mackin, and he repeated again today. Listen here. Uh, he didn't know who the Proud Boys were. The first time I heard of them was in the debate, uh, but the media uh, continues to put these names into circulation and give them a lot of public attention. And Melissa, just one more observation here. If the president didn't know who Proud Boys were and Joe Biden just threw out the name, if he didn't know who they were, why did he denounce them? Why didn't he say, well, I don't know who they are. Can you give me a little bit more information about them and then make a decision about it? So this, is, this all remains very puzzling. And for all of you on Twitter who are hammering me for answering that, for asking that question, I don't care because it's a question that needs to be asked. And clearly, the president's Republican colleagues a mile away from here are looking for an answer for it, too. So stop deflecting. Stop okay. blaming the media. I'm tired of it. All right. John, John Roberts is tired of it. Uh, John Roberts, I've known for years. He's a, he's a friend of mine. I'm sorry he's angry, but he's just wrong. Play the tape again. Kaylee said... I, we denounce racial uh, white supremacy in all its forms. What more do you want us to say?